If a little green is good, more is even better. Now, back to Green is Good with John Shigarian and Mike Brady. Welcome back to Green is Good, and we're so excited and honored to have Tom Zaki on the phone with us, who's the founder and CEO of TerraCycle, which is one of the world's foremost companies in terms of eco-capitalism, upcycling, and and Tom was named the number one CEO in America under 30 by Inc. Magazine and so many other publications. I've seen Tom for years on television. This is an honor, Tom, to have you on Green is Good to talk about TerraCycle. Thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, you know, Tom, the first time I saw you was on one of those great shows, Planet Green or something like that. But for our listeners, tell us the story. Tell us your vision, how you got to started, the whole worms and how you got TerraCycle started and where you've taken it in the last eight or nine, ten years and where it's going. Absolutely, yeah. So TerraCycle, we're eight years old as a business. Um, we now operate, uh, I think, actually in six countries, and we're opening up uh, four or five more this year. Basically, the, the, the way that TerraCycle model works today is uh, we focus on any type of waste, any type of consumer product waste that is non-recyclable. So everything from a potato chip back to a candy wrapper to a juice pouch to things like razor blades, pens, pill packaging, and so on. And we create free collection programs where people can, for free, we actually pay for the shipping, send us garbage, um, and then we make a two-cent donation for every piece of garbage that people send us, and then we make consumer products from that waste. To give you a sense of scale here, I mean, we have now just in America 10.1 million people collecting, and that's growing by about half a million people every single month. And this whole uh, idea is replicated now in Canada, in Mexico, Brazil, the UK, and Ireland with uh, TerraCycle divisions out there, and we're opening up a number of more countries. What happens then is basically all this waste that we collect, we then uh, figure out the science behind the waste and then convert them into consumer products. So it's everything from turning a Capri Sun pouch into a backpack or even you know taking a Capri Sun pouch and turning it into plastic lumber and then selling that into the world's biggest retailers like Walmart, Home Depot, Target, and, and so on. Um, the whole company actually ironically started um, all uh, around one specific product, which was uh, organic waste fed to worms, and worms pooped out worm poop. <laughs> and then we took the worm poop, liquefied it, and packaged it directly in new soda bottles. I think we're actually still the only company in the world to mass produce products that are l- literally packaged uh, in new soda bottles. Uh, today, everything from fertilizers uh, to cleaners. And that idea of making and packaging a product out of waste uh, was really interesting to me. I ended up uh, dropping out of Princeton uh, at the time to build the business, and then from there it just expanded to really just a phenomenal place where it is today. And we're, you know, just to give you a sense uh, again of scale, we're collecting probably close to you know two and a half to three million pieces of garbage every day right now coming into our uh, factory. Unbelievable! And the one factory you have today is in New Jersey. Well, we have uh, locations all over the place. So, yes, our okay. headquarters, where I'm speaking okay. to you from today, is in New Jersey, in Trenton. Okay. Um, but we have uh, five warehouses here in the U.S. Uh, we, wor- uh, we don't actually manufacture anything anymore. Everything is done through partnerships. So we have about 100 different manufacturing companies that take garbage from us, and we teach them how to make it into everything from shower curtains to backpacks to industrial products. So, again, uh, you're taking what was not necessarily considered a recyclable uh, on a legacy basis, and you You've now taken that out of the trash stream and you're recycling that now also, which is keeping our landfills and our environment better and, and, and creating a whole reuse market that never existed before. Yeah, you're absolutely right. We try to focus only on things that are non-recyclable, which, frankly, is the majority of consumer products out there. It's about 80% of the products we buy are not recyclable. And so those are the ones we focus on creating solutions to. And basically, our model is we, the brands um, fund these collection programs. And uh, it's, it's the equivalent of basically a private version of recycling around these non-recyclable waste streams. And some of the programs that are a little older now, like the Juice Pouch program, for example, is actually actively collecting uh, today in its fourth year um, close to 1.5 to 2 percent of that entire uh, uh, category of waste and should be hopefully bigger than the entire concept of recycling for that category probably in about five to ten years from now. Well, you know, it's amazing. I'm on, you've got a great website and a lot of our listeners, when they listen to the show, like to sit on their laptops and uh, surf the net and you got to go right now. If you're doing just that, hit the the website, TerraCycle.net. You're talking about the drink pouch brigade and, and getting paid two cents for each, each pouch. But according to your site, 
38,412 participating locations. This is really and truly amazing. Yeah, it's this this particular program. We have 28 uh, programs in the U.S. 28 different uh, type of waste collection programs. Wow! Um, and this the the Drink Pouch Brigade specifically um, is in over half of all American schools. And that one program on its own collects uh, roughly one to two million pieces, uh, one to two million juice pouches every single week. It's a phenomenal uh, program. And we're seeing the same type of scale come to all the other programs, whether it's candy wrappers or chip bags. And what's really awesome is to see schools, especially getting behind and teaching kids the idea of, you know, what happens to materials, um, what is the, you know, what, what does upcycling mean, what does recycling mean, all these things that usually uh, folks don't have a chance to learn about, and, uh, and you know, they raise money in the process. The Drink Pouch Brigade uh, has already given away just that one program. We've been able to donate over $800,000 to charity, and this year alone, that program is expected to generate w- around $1.5 million for charities in the U.S. Unbelievable. And, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I've read in some of your materials online and other places that you have about 70,000 collection points now. That's right, we do, yeah. And we, again, are growing by close to 500 new collection points a day. So the system is, is, is getting quite large. And, and the whole goal is to make a system in each country that we're operating in that is going to be rivaling the system of recycling and trying to basically bring the fantastic solution recycling did for things that are not recyclable. Uh, and, and, and so explain to our listeners who are now getting more and more familiar as the Green Revolution takes hold in America and becomes part of our DNA, they're, they're getting very familiar with the issue and the concept of recycling. Talk about a little bit about what upcycling means, Tom. Sure, absolutely. So first, if you look at, you know, what are the things you can do with garbage? Let's just take a, a simple example like a uh, soda bottle. You could put it into a landfill, which is probably the worst thing to do because you create no value when right. you do that. The next best thing to do would be waste to energy or incineration uh, where you burn it, but at least you're, uh, you know, you're getting out energy from the process of burning it. It's not a great process, but right. there's energy recovery. Right. The next best is recycling, where you're melting down the bottle and recovering the plastic. Now, in that case, the recycling center is viewing the plastic as value, clearly, right. but they're viewing the shape as negative value. The shape, in fact, is basically garbage. They're spending money to destroy it. Right. Now, upcycling or reuse is saying, I'm going to value every aspect of that waste stream. So in the case of a soda bottle, it would be refilling it with a different content. With something like a juice pouch, it would be sewing it together into a fabric and then making things like backpacks or tote bags or pencil cases out of it. But the whole idea of upcycling uh, is to say we are going to value every Every aspect of that waste stream, and basically not treat it as waste, treat it as a valuable input. That is amazing. So when the when the U.S. EPA puts out their statistics now, let's say um, the average American gets rid of 4.3 pounds of waste, 54 percent of that goes to a landfill, and 33 or 30, yeah, about 33 percent of that gets recycled. But they predict that over the next 10 years, those numbers are going to flip flop with incineration just staying flat at about 13 percent. It's because of you and TerraCycle that those numbers are going to be able to be flip-flopped and hopefully over 50% of what we throw away in, a, in, a, in the United States will then be recycled and only 30-something percent of what we throw away will be landfill because of what you're doing and what you're expanding. Well, that's right. And I mean, really, we all we do is, is, is provide the opportunity. The, the, the people who are actually going to make this work are going to be the general consumer. You know, people listening today, right. if, if they're interested in being a part of this, you just go to the TerraCycle website, TerraCycle.net, sign up for free and collect. And, you know, what we can do, uh, TerraCycle and our brand partners who fund these programs, yeah. is to create the opportunity. But the consumers need to choose to care about the waste enough to participate in the program. So explain that. Can... A mom or a young person in college today listening to this show, they could go to TerraCycle.net. And how does this work? Walk them through that because this is exactly why we do this show, to get people, to get our listeners more involved and part of the solution now. Well, absolutely, yeah. So let's say you're listening to the show and you're interested in being involved. You would go to TerraCycle.net and you'd see today 28 different waste streams that we collect. Now, one point of clarification is you're going to see, for example, the Coffee Bag Brigade, and it's going to be that one It's sponsored by Starbucks. In each category, we have a major brand sponsoring these collection programs, but you can collect any brand of that category. So you don't have to collect just Starbucks coffee bags. It could be any brand of coffee bag that you wish. But let's say, for example, you know, you're in your office and you want to sign up and collect, say, pens. 
you go to the website, you just uh, sign up entirely for free and click start collecting on the pen uh, brigade. At that point, you just take any cardboard box you may have lying around. It could be a shoe box or a paper box or just any cardboard box you have. And if you don't have one, then we'll send one to you for free. You can just request one on our website. You then fill that box up and get your friends to, you know, maybe it's in your office, get everyone together, fill it up with pens. Again, any brand of pen. Once uh, the box is full, say you've collected a thousand pens or something, you close the box, go back to our website and download a free shipping label. So we give you shipping for free on every one of these programs. You then put the label on the box and send it in. Then when we receive it, uh, we check it in and donate two cents for every piece of garbage that you sent to us. And that goes into your account. And then you have to allocate that to either any school in America or any charity uh, in America, as long as it's an official charity. And basically, you just repeat uh, and become a micro-recycling or, in fact, upcycling center for that specific type of waste. Um, and that's basically how it works. It's completely free. There's no cost. And in fact, people make uh, money in the process. So wait a second now. So you're telling me the environment stays cleaner because of this whole process. Jobs are created because people are making new products out of these products. And also schools or other worthy charities are benefiting from also a donation that goes to help further their mission. That's exactly right. There really shouldn't be any losers in this in this whole process. And <laughs> what's nice about it, too, is that there is obviously a major cost in, in running these programs. Sure. I mean, most of these brands are spending you know, really big sums of money to help these programs, uh, uh, you know, to, to have them exist. And what's nice is they, it's the brands taking responsibility over their packaging and taking substantial marketing dollars away from advertising and putting it into creating basically a private version of recycling around their waste stream with TerraCycle. Well, that's, that's, that's fascinating. And I don't want to play, have you play any favors or anything, but get, can you give a shout out to a couple of the brands that have sponsored? these programs just to give them a little bit of green love and to explain to our listeners who is really underwriting some of these great programs? Sure, yeah, absolutely. And what this is a, actually a unique thing because in most of the programs, it's not who you would expect. Uh, these are all these are the big mega brands uh, oh. in each case who are okay. not necessarily uh, brands that have always had green as their core. Okay. So an example in the drink pouch program, it's Capri Sun. In our candy wrapper program, Mars is a, is a major sponsor. In the chip bag program, it's Frito-Lay and so wow. on and so forth. Wonderful. So in the, each category, it's the biggest brand in that space. And <laughs> what's, what's really great is it's, it's nice to see non-green uh, brands really uh, putting major effort and major funding behind a green initiative. So uh, Absolutely. And I'm so glad you mentioned those great people because they deserve the shout out. Talk about, though, what don't you take? What aren't you interested in? What aren't you making products from? Is there such a thing? Well, you know, the, for us to create a collection program, we need to have the funding from a brand to uh, to do that. So oh. we've looked at basically every waste stream that exists. We right. have uh, in Europe, for example, we're going to be launching a program with razor blades very soon. Here in the U.S., we're actually going to be doing um, expired pills and pill packaging. So you're going to see every, you know, if you keep checking back to our website, roughly every three or four weeks, a new collection program goes live. I actually think the, the, the next one going live in the U.S. will be for pet food bags. The So we're open to collect basically every type of waste that exists. Uh, the, the trick is that we have to line up a brand to help fund that program. So today, TerraCycle doesn't collect every type of garbage, but we keep adding a new type of waste stream roughly every three weeks or so. God, God, oh, that is amazing. So now that you talk, said it that way, what are your favorite materials that you collect and what are some of the neater things that you make out of those materials? Sure. I mean, the, this is maybe even the message to anyone designing products. You know, if you yeah. want to make a green product, even if it's, uh, or at least try to make the packaging more green, it's, it's all about using as few materials as absolutely possible. So what we are more limited in are things when we have to collect like toothbrushes, razor blades, pens. These are uh, what people call hybrids, where you have multiple types of materials yeah. all mixed together. Those are much more challenging because the solution there is really you have to shred them and then separate the materials. In things that are more pure, like a potato chip bag, is primarily polypropylene. So it allows us to make a much wider range of products. Um, I actually really love potato chip bags and candy wrappers and cookie <laughs> wrappers because you can make fabrics out of, uh, out of these materials, uh, and then that can be turned into backpacks, um, shower curtains, and so on. Uh, but then you can also shred and compress them into a board. Uh, you can also melt them into a plastic, and we've actually just developed the ability to turn chip bags into a fabric. And so what we do is we 
develop ways to convert these waste streams into new materials and then work with really cool manufacturing companies that then take that waste and turn it into a finished consumer product that you can then find in a retailer. So, Tom, even though this is just a standard question that we, Mike and I ask all of our wonderful guests, what does the future hold for TerraCycle? It sounds like it's unlimited just to the point of whatever your creativity is because you're taking in products that are so abundant in this world and you're turning them into brand new products that you're you're only limited by your creativity what does the future hold for TerraCycle and how big are you going to get well, it's a good question. You know, for the past eight years, TerraCycle has doubled in size every year. Um, we're at about 100 employees at this point. Wow. Uh, we're about, you know, $20 million company. So we're still a relatively small business. But our goal is to basically, and so what we're executing, is to create a collection program for every relevant waste stream, then replicate that collection program in every country, uh, since every country has a waste problem, a little different in each country, but basically every country has a waste problem, and then to make each of those collection programs in each of those countries as absolutely big as possible, trying to get them all as big as today's system of recycling. So our goal in the U.S., for example, is in every one of our collection programs to divert at least 30% of that specific category. And so if we can do that, then we have, you know, a billion-dollar company on our hands because of just the scale of of these waste streams. But it's something that if you look at how the system has grown, we're absolutely accomplishing that um, piece by piece or piece of garbage by piece of garbage. (laughs) if you will. Right, right. But so besides big brands, do other cities, states, and municipalities ever sponsor the great stuff that you do? You know, every once in a while, we do work with uh, with, with local cities and, and governments, but the, the vast majority of the time, um, it's the big brands, uh, or, you know, in small brands, but either way, it's, it's, it's the companies that are responsible for this waste that, that, that produce the funding to allow us to do what we do. Sure. And then the people who collect it are typically, you know, churches, schools, offices, it's all community organizations that then get together and create major collection programs. Because, again, it's, it, it's great to have a company be able to create one of these programs, um, but it's a completely different thing to actually be able to collect, and that's what the people out there are helping us do, which is they're the ones going out and collecting whatever the waste stream it is that they're interested in. You know, Tom, I, you know, I've seen you on television, I've read about you in magazines, you know, I, and I feel that I like I know you very well already because I just I've been a big fan of yours for years. What are some of the more favorite things that your great brand TerraCycles accomplished, and you personally, and what like what? you the most proud of over the last eight years and when what personally have you set your visions on for the next years ahead well, so one of my favorite products is uh, one that we make for Target. Um, Target challenged us uh, about four years ago to create a solution to plastic bags because that's a really big environmental and waste issue. And so the way what we did is we figured out a technology where you can take plastic bags and fuse them together into a fabric. Uh, basically, you can do this at home. You take a wax piece of paper, um, take a number of plastic bags, put a wax piece of paper on top of it, iron it, and you get a fabric out at the end. That fabric is very thick and strong and then can be sewn. So we create a bag for Target now called Retote, and it's basically a reusable bag that's made from 25 compressed plastic bags. Now, that's been a really cool product and has been out for a number of years um, in Target, but what was, I think, a really exciting uh, thing for us is we came up with an advertising concept where basically you could, and, and they ran this, I think, in Newsweek and People magazine, where you could take the cover off the magazine, and magazine covers, since they're so glossy, are not yeah. always recyclable. Oh. You can flip them inside out, and then you tape the edges, and then effectively you have an envelope. You then fill the env- that envelope with uh, plastic bags, tape the, uh, the opening, and then you have a sealed envelope, and they actually printed prepaid postage on the inside front cover uh, so that you can then send it in for free. And uh, every time they've run this, um, 30,000 to 40,000 consumers sent in huge numbers of plastic bags, and it was a, it was a big, big success. They actually ran it again uh, a couple of weeks ago in, uh, uh, in all of their circulars, about 50 million circulars. And what it showed us is that consumers are really interested in doing the right thing um, and spending that extra time on, on trying to participate in the green movement. So that was a really exciting product for us. 
Um, another really exciting one was uh, when we launched the Drink Pouch program, which was our first collection program. The first product we ever created was a pencil case. Very, very simple product. It's basically six drink pouches sewn together into a simple flat pencil case. What was really exciting is that it was retailing, I think, at around $2 and became the best-selling pencil case in America that year, beating out all the other pencil cases that come from China and, and all sorts of other places. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, Tom, while we're, I was talking about your fantastic website, and I mean that, fantastic, at, at TerraCycle.net. I went on there. It is so easy to navigate. I just signed up where I work. I'll be the, the chief uh, green officer here. But signed up. I mean, I'm just looking at all of the stuff that goes into the trash here every day in the lunchroom, and uh, I'm going to start collecting that. Nice. What are you going to collect? Have you have you decided? Well, I've, yet? I've looked and I've already submitted, but it's going to be definitely drink pouches, candy wrappers. We've got uh, some other things, uh, some plastic bottles, etc. At Clear Channel Radio, there you go. You just got a new a, a new collecting point right here at Clear Channel. Nice. Now nice. that's well, in, thank you for collecting. You betcha. The more the more garbage, the better. Well, here's the deal. It's it's Fresno, California, but Clear Channel Radio is a huge company, and uh, I'm going to see how this works. I think I'm going to just forward this on to our CEOs. Very nice. Thank you. Hey, Tom, you know, we're down to the last two minutes. We usually call it the two-minute warning, and, and you're just, uh, you know, just an amazing guest, and we're going to have you back on, of course, at a later date. But do you have some pearls of wisdom to share with not only our great listeners who are consumers, of course, out there and can go on your wonderful website, but also to the budding entrepreneurs who want to be the next Tom Zaki? What, what, what do you have to share with them as we leave, leave today uh, our show? Well, I have really two things I'd, I'd love to share. Sure. First, you know, to the to the future entrepreneur is is that there's so much opportunity, especially in America, to be able to create a fast and dynamic growing business. And I think the most important part to that is to actually just, if you have an idea, just start and just you know whatever it is to open up and actually begin doing whatever you're interested in doing. That's the most important step. And a lot of my friends who are you know thinking about business concepts, that's the biggest place where people stumble is that they just get overwhelmed and don't give it a shot. And what's really cool is that if you try, most, most of the issues become very clear and very solvable as you're actually doing what it is you want to do. Mm. Now, on the other side, <laughs> uh, the message I have for everyone out there in the world of waste is, you know, when you, when you have a consumer product, and, uh, and you're about, you know, and you have some leftover packaging because you finished using it, you can still throw it out, but just before you throw it out, think one more time about, is there something valuable that I'm actually throwing out? Because in fact, waste is, in nature, it doesn't exist, and it's a valuable commodity for, for the next system that takes it. And it's the same thing we can, uh, should consider. You know, if you have a yogurt tub and you're about to throw it out, why not instead plant a plant in it, and, and so on. And I think the other really important message that I think many times we don't understand is it's consumer Consumers, we vote every day uh, for the products that we want by buying them. And I think the more conscious we can become of knowing that what we buy is what more will be made of, I think the world will be a much better place. Well said, well put. We're going to have you back on the show. All our listeners, go out, join now, TerraCycle.net, become part of the revolution. Tom Zaki, you are truly living proof that green is good.